Greetings from Calgary. Today is another of my Gadgeteer Motor Series covering PID controllers. In particular, this PID controller will control the rotational speed of a DC motor. So the objective is that the motor will keep a continuous speed under variable loads and it does this with a feedback loop where the speed is continuously fed back into the system so that a new corrective power setting can be calculated and met to correct any errors in the speed. What makes a PID really interesting is that they can be used unchanged to control almost anything as a PID controller relies only on the measured process variables not on knowledge of the underlying process so this code could be used to control the motors control motor speed fluid levels oven temperatures headings or other items as always I'll make the source code for this project available with links below and include links to other sites containing useful information about PID controllers a PID is an example of a three term controller where P is the proportional term the I is the integral term and the D is the derivative term. P depends on the present error, I on the accumulation of past errors, and D is a prediction of future errors based on the current rate of change. Now sometimes a PID controller is overkill and a two-term PI controller is ample and we can do this easily with our controller as to get a PI controller from our PID controller we just zero out the D term. I'm using a PID originally written by Ron Byers and posted on Code Project some years ago. I've made some small changes to, to the code to get it to work with the .NET micro framework so I can use it in my Gadgeteer project. Gadgeteer is a great way to start building devices and learning about hardware. So for example, I want to learn about PIDs but not soldering or wiring up raw components. So with Gadgeteer, I'm able to use ready to plug in motor controllers, pulse counters, and everything else I needed for this experiment so I could easily assemble my test project. I should also mention that I got this motor from a paper drive assembly from a printer that I salvage for parts. As old printers are easy to find and often free and contain motors, encoders, interrupters, solenoids and other handy parts for experimenting with. There are a couple of features about this PID that I really like. First it runs on its own thread in the background and ties in nicely with whatever you're trying to control. You have some parameters that you can set for your PG or your, your proportional integral and derivative uh, components. Um, then you can set in your max speed and the minimum speed, the max power, minimum power. And then I've added this to it uh, to the original code where I can say how often I want the readings to occur. So in this case it's every 200 milliseconds. It'll try to adjust the speed. Then we have a function here that gets the current speed, uh, gets the current uh, operating point. Um, we have one another function here that we pass to this routine that gets the current set point. So if we were to change the set point or whatever we the PID will pick that up automatically. And then the last function here that's passed in as a parameter is how the PID can set, you know, the, the new control point, or in our case, set the power to the motor. So, you know, you put all this together, you end up with a really nice, tidy little PID routine that you can use easily in a bunch of different systems. So let's take a look at the test system that we built with Gadgeteer. And what we'll do is we'll start with is the motor and in particular what I want to show is on the back of this motor is an encoder so this black wheel is attached to the shaft and it turns but the black wheel as you can see has a bunch of little slots cut into it and so these slots when they pass between this interrupter that is admitting so we have something here that's admitting a, an infrared light source that shines through and as it the wheel turns that light pulses and on this side is a receiver and so for every pulse of light it has of course a it raises a, a, a pulse signal and then this board here is a gadgeteer pulse counter it's able to 
count those pulses and so we can say well how many pulses you know we can say um, take a count and then take a count a little bit later and we know the, how many pulses have occurred over a particular period of time and so that we're able to calculate the speed of the motor uh, the rotational speed of the motor so let's have a look at some of the other components we have as I mentioned this is a pulse counter this is a, a motor controller that's able to control two motors we're only using one motor here in this case and it what it does is it is able to uh, uh, control the motor speed with uh, pulse width modulation uh, as a duty cycle and so we're able to have really good motor control uh, a character display and I'm sorry that this always kinda comes up washed out on uh, my video camera one day I'll have to get a better video camera but up here it shows our targeted speed down here it, it uh, across here it shows our actual speed and then down here it shows how much power is being sent to the motor and then we have a Serbius main board down here is just a power board uh, it's red of course so that means it's a uh, gadgeteer power module and then we have three buttons the first button turns it on and off the second button allows us to change between a PID and a PI controller and the last button what I want to do is I wanted to be able to change the set point so this add subtracts 500 rpm to the set point so let's fire this bad boy up and see what we get so if we turn this on our target that we want to hit is 1500 rpm so we can turn this on and it starts turning and we can see that we're 1499 1497 1501 so our speed is pretty good and we're running at a duty cycle at about 59 percent and so then if I want I can click this button here it'll change our set point to 2000 rpm and then so our speed here is 2002 2006 2002 1998 and we're running about 79 per, uh, duty cycle 79 percent and then we can turn this back off and it'll slow it back down to 1500 rpm so now what I want to do is I want to try and introduce a bit of a load to this system I'm going to take my trusty pencil and I'm just going to gr rub it on the uh, the gear here and then that'll introduce a load so you can see that we're still trying to keep our speeds uh, 1488 except now we're running at a duty cycle of 70 percent we'll press a little harder uh, we're still about 1500 rpm we're 75 77 we'll press even harder we're up to 81 percent 82 percent but our speed is still holding consistent reasonably consistent around 1500 so if I let go of the let the pencil off the gear remove the load our speed goes back to 1500 so the PID controller is controlling the engine speed despite whatever load that it is that I'm trying to apply to the the motor and uh, so right now let's see if I can get it right up there 98 so that's a hundred percent load and we're still cranking about 1503 so it's doing a really good job keeping it on track so we'll crank it up to 2000 rpm and we'll do the same thing we'll apply some load to the motor and so now we're up 99 percent there's a hundred percent so we're not able to make our speed but it's got the motor cranked right up as far as it can we'll back it off and you can see that when we remove the load we get a bit of overshoot because you know we've got a hundred percent power applied to the motor so as soon as the load comes off the motor kind of runs up a little bit overshoots a bit but then the PID controller brings it back down to the RPM that it needs to be so there is um, some load with the PID so we'll just switch that off we'll switch it over to a, using a PI controller and so there's a, up to our speed of uh, 1500 so the, uh, the the PID controller works really really well we can crank that the uh, the PI controller we can try it up to 2000 so again it does the same thing and we can apply put it back down to 1500 we'll put some load on it and we'll see that the PI controller is also going to try and keep the speed around 1500 RPM despite whatever kind of load that we're trying to put on it we're up to 75 77 percent 
and the control the controller is trying to keep the speed around 1500 so it's doing exactly what it needs to do so we'll turn that and turn that off so I captured some data from the device here so that I could build a bit of a chart that shows a little better perhaps what's going on and so you can see here this bottom line is the error um, percent error in in the speed the orange line here is the power that's being delivered to the motor so you can see here when we turn the motor on we've got a pretty high error because well we're going from zero to our targeted speed of 1500 rpm and so we get about 100 percent power applied and then the motor comes up the speed and we quickly get into where we're running at 1500 rpm there's very little error in in the in the system and so we're cruising along and then I started to an apply and a load here so we can see that there's a speed correction and then I applied an increasing load here and so we can see now when I applied an increasing load of this pencil it's not a consistent increase so that we see some errors and stuff here but they're pretty small and then it comes up here and then here I release the pencil and now this is an overspeed situation because you know we're applying almost hundred percent power to the motor so as soon as the loads released the motor ramps up very quickly but the PID gets it back in under control very quickly so it corrects our error and then we're cruising along then I applied some uh, some loads and removed it and we see this uh, overspeed situation again but the PID is able to control it and then we're back to a regular 1500 rpm and then here I increased the speed to 2000 rpm so again we have this spike of an error of instantly a 500 rpm and the PID applies power and then smooths out pretty quickly that we're running at 2000 rpm and then I start applying some load now in some cases you'll see that my load is right up here hundred percent so we're getting some error there we release the load we have that overspeed situation again and then running with no load very smooth graph again very little error we're running at a pretty solid uh, 2000 rpm and then I reduce the target speed to 1500 rpm so again we have a overspeed situation so the PID uh, sees this error cuts the power and then quickly gets it back to 1500 rpm and so the PID controller works really cool and like I said what's really neat about a PID controller is that it doesn't really care what the process is or you know whether it's driving a, a thermometer or it's getting a it's readings from a thermometer and it's uh, controlling the power to a heating element or whatever it only cares about so what are the conditions right now what have my errors been over the past that it accumulates and such and, and is able to control whatever type of device it is that we're trying to do now the real secret to a PID is in the tuning right which really isn't a secret if you say uh, use something like the Ziegler Nicholas method which is what I use to tune this controller then it's really more just an experimental process to find the ultimate gain KP and the oscillation period known as PU and then you can calculate various values for PI and D uh, from there depending on your needs now this is nothing to be afraid of or it's complex or anything and once you start playing around doing this it's actually fun to see how the system reacts to different values like if your values are way out of whack you'll see the your speeds will oscillate wildly and then they'll just head off into the into the toolies and so you know that that value is not right and so you can start iterating your way down fairly quickly to uh, to correct numbers and if you really feel up to it you can code an auto tuner to tune these uh, these variables unfortunately most auto tuners I've seen either they didn't work or they didn't work very really well and so typically you're probably gonna have to hand tune anyways but the point is is that there is no optimal answer right there's just answers that work and so your variables that you calculate for one system likely won't work for another system and so you'll need to tune every system so for example I'm working on a couple different uh, rovers and so one rover my motors have encoders on them just very similar to this uh, this device here 
and so I can use the encoders to control the speeds of the tracks on either side because inevitably when you first power, you know, power up one of these rovers it never goes straight and that's because of mechanical efficiencies or tractions or whatever between the different uh, motors drive systems is never the same and so one motor is always going to turn faster than the other and your rover is always going to turn and so you would use a PID system to be able to control the speed of those motors so they both turn at the same speed and your rover goes straight another rover I'm working on I don't have encoders on the motors but I have a gyro and so I'm able to use that gyro reading uh, to control how much power is sent to either motor so that the rover again goes straight and so that's two examples of where I'm going to be using PIDs here in the very in the very near future so hopefully this video has helped you understand how easy PIDs are to use and you know they're, they're nothing to be afraid of uh, I sometimes I see a lot of questions about PIDs but not a lot of answers and so that's one of the reasons why I made this video and will make the source code and everything available so that hopefully it can help you use PIDs in your project. Uh, so until next time, happy gadgeteering.